Your job relied on your ability to keep secrets and spin the truth. I just cannot imagine a way in which you could have fucked up more. Publicity, that's what you need, Reverend. Publicity, otherwise you're just gonna be another babbling voice in the dark. When I'm representing you, it's class all the way. Pretty smooth, Adam. Thank you. Now, if you can absorb everything I'm trying to teach you, focus and get a new wardrobe, you can make it big in public relations. I got a sense. Oh, it's a publicity man's nature to be a liar. I wouldn't hire you if you wasn't a liar. I said I'd get you magazine coverage, and I'm getting you in the magazine. Look, you gotta trust me. No means yes to these people. They would find out. Who's gonna find out? The, the American pig. Exactly. Who's gonna tell them? Tell them that, like yourself, he's got the scruples of a guinea pig and the morals of a gangster. Well, we just gotta distract him. Just gotta distract him. I lie in person. And on the phone, I lie to my friends. I lie to newspapers and magazines who, who sell my lies to more and more people. So there you have it, a brief glimpse into a corporate culture that has industry leaders and management analysts all over the country scratching their heads. Tell me what you want, then. I'm offering you a chance to redeem yourself. You look out into those cameras and you bare your soul. We got hostile action. Hey, hey, nothing is hostile until I say it is. We deal with ethical issues every day, personally and in business and industry, um, especially with public relations, because we have the, what we talked about last week was about the uh, ability to persuade people. We talked about history and how there was always a fine line as to what was real and what was not real, what's exaggerated or made up to make things look greater than they are. So basically, we're facing the, the dilemma as to what public relations is and, and how do we make it um, so, so that things are ethical. So basically, our conduct is measured not only against our conscience, but also against some kind of norm of acceptability that's determined by society, uh, professional groups, or, or even a person's employer. The difficulty is ascertaining whether an act is ethical lies in the fact that individuals have different standards and uh, perceptions of what's right and wrong. Most ethical conflicts are not black and white, but fall into a, a kind of a gray area. And remember, since public relations people are supposed to be advocates for their organization or their clients, uh, we must also strive to represent the interests of various stakeholders in our organizations. You can see where difficult um, ethical issues might r arise from that kind of thing. We have to get people to like us. We have to make our image look the best or the, or the greatest it can be. And to do that, we have to uh, make some major decisions that could affect our image in the um, public and to our audiences. And so we have to do what we can to become as ethical as possible. To help a little bit with that, um, the Public Relations Society of America uh, or the PRSA, put together a code of ethics for businesses and industries and, and, the, well, and also the public relations professionals use to follow. And the idea behind it is to create some kind of code of ethics that um, helps guide us to making the right decision. One of them is advocacy. So we basically serve the public interest by acting as responsible advocates for those we represent. We provide a voice in the marketplace for ideas, facts, viewpoints, to aid in informed public debate. So basically we're advocates for our for those people we represent, the, our clients, our uh, companies that we deal with. So our idea is to kind of put our, our self out there and advocate the best we can. We also need to be honest. We adhere to the highest standards of accuracy and truth in advancing the interests of both those who we represent and in communicating with the public. So the challenge here is not only um, being honest through your company and with the company, but also in what we say to the public. And we need to be experts. Um, so expertise is one where we acquire and responsibly use specialized knowledge and experience. And that's about persuading and, and having that, that, that knowledge of how you can manipulate or persuade public opinion. We advance the profession through continued professional development, research, and education. We build mutual understanding, credibility, and relationships among a wide array of institutions and audiences. So we need to continuously uh, learn 
and, and educate ourselves on what is the right thing, what's going out there in this society. Um, we need to, you know, talk to each other, use best practices, best practices whenever we can. The other code is independence. We provide objective counsel to those we represent. We're accountable for our own actions. So basically any kind of a counsel is what we feel is the right thing to do um, as a public relations professional is important. We're accountable for it. So if we give the wrong advice or we tell upper management something that's um, not ethical, that's our, our responsibility. Loyalty. We are faithful to those we represent while honoring our obligation to serve the public interest. That's a challenge. Again, we're, we're loyal to our companies, our businesses, our organizations. So we know that we have to do the best by them. But we also have to honor the obligation to how we serve the public interest, how we are putting ourselves out there. So even though we are loyal to our company, we also have to be sure that we're not lying to the public. And we need to be fair. We deal fairly with clients, employers, competitors, peers, vendors, the media, and the general public. We respect all opinions and support the right of free expression. So if you're dealing with loyalty and, and many of the different things that we just talked about, how do you say no and still keep your job? <clears throat> you have to, we know the public relations person is trying to be as ethical as possible, but your business may or may not have the same kind of a scenario in their head. So if there's a situation where you're running an ethical issue um, as a PR professional, make sure that um, you use and cite this uh, Public Relations Society of America's code as a framework for responding to unethical questions. And make sure that your boss and people you work with are aware of the code that you abide by. And make sure you point to your organization's own stated values or goals also. Um, you might also want to let your like boss know what the headlines might be if the um, unethical behavior they're, they're doing is discovered. Um, use the point of view of the affected public people to make rational or emotional appeal. Get others in your organization to join you in saying no also. In no cases, um, and this is what, what it, what's important with research, look for other cases where other organizations behave similarly and highlight any negative outcomes that might have come from that. Because the reality is we often force with these ethical dilemmas all the time. Um, so you should always think about things that might come up in your workplace or in your job ahead of time and be prepared to handle that um, as you need to. Your job relies. So ways to stay ethical, try to always be honest. There's no proverb that goes, with flies you may get ahead in the world, but you can never go back. And that's just as true when you're sharing a story with the public. If you present even one lie in a story, it may possibly help you in the short term, but there's always a strong chance it can come back to bite you. Not only can it ruin your own credibility as a uh, publicist, but it can make it hard or even impossible for a media outlet to ever take you seriously again. But also if you're a notable personality or a brand, the negative consequences can be tremendous as the reputation that you've always kind of basically had on a pedestal for the public to judge. Although a crisis can always be a possibility when you're in the limelight, um, one never wants to m help make it an actuality. Not on your ability to Another thing you want to do is, is avoid things like uh, pay for play, like giving money towards an organization or something like that to uh, basically try to guarantee that your story gets published. What's interesting though, a lot of the newspapers in our area are basically not running free press releases unless you're buying advertising also. I've noticed that with the press enterprise and in, in, in um, the Bloomsburg area is doing that very same thing. They want to make sure that you are paying for advertising. So when they give you free advertising, um, it's sort of a helpful. So it's, it's often reported in many different countries like China, for instance, they only accept press releases and stories of space within the publication is purchased. That's what I was saying about the, um, uh, the press enterprise. 
The idea of public relations is that it is an earned media. In, in other words, stories are important enough that they are worthy of the publication's real estate, not bought. So your stories have to be newsworthy, and uh, because they're so newsworthy, the, the, the media should be running it. Paying for placement not only delegitimizes de uh, an important story, but it's also anti-ethical to the whole idea of the media outlet offering a third-party endorsement. Um, which is basically one of the primary goals of, of public relations. Keep secrets. To be more ethically sound, one thing you don't want to do is throw your competition under the bus. It's never a smart idea to slander your competitors, especially in the public arena. It's one thing to present a valid reason to make a distinction uh, for the sake of comparison, but it's an entirely different thing to pull your competitor into a bullfight and then wave a red flag in front of them. For one, you, you open yourself up to uh, revengeful efforts at any time, so they'll come back to haunt you some at some point. But more importantly, whenever one protests too much about someone else, it never looks good for you know his or her own character. Being the truth. And this is another important thing um, regarding ethics, is don't misrepresent the facts. It's basically similar to not lying um, you don't want to distort facts to suit your own needs. So if you think about it, if you're a large corporation, should you tell your shareholders that your company's stocks are only worth $5 per share when they're really worth 50? Should a doctor tell his or her patient with cancer that most people with their type of cancer live for two years when in reality they live for only three months? If you twist the facts, you run no major risk of not only destroying your own and the media's outlet's credibility, but you also deceive the public by providing them with incorrect information. And again, this stuff can come back to haunt you down the line. I just cannot. And this is one we see a lot too. Um, don't offer bribes for coverage. Taking a reporter or producer out to lunch is one thing. Offering them a trip to Cabo San Lucas is another. Um, although you may really want that Wall Street Journal real estate reporter to cover the launch event of your client's new residential product, um, it's a bad idea. And for one, it makes you and your client look desperate, having a story not worthy uh, for print or um, online exposure. It's also a disservice to all the parties. Moreover, how would you like for the reporter to get fired for accepting your bribe and then hold it against you when they move on to another position at a different newspaper or TV station? Next time, think about sending them a box of chocolates or a Starbucks gift card after they cover your story instead. Not imagine a way. So in conclusion, ethics for a public relations person is a tricky thing. And you really have to be conscientious of what your thoughts are and what you, and how you would handle any kind of a situation. Um, we deal with ethics in the workplace all the time. Um, think about it. Is it wrong to use your company's email to, uh, for personal reasons, to, to send out uh, information to somebody? Is it wrong to use office equipment to help your family and friends with homework? Is it wrong to play computer games on your office computer during the workday? Is it wrong to use office equipment to do internet shopping or look up something that's not related? Um, what's the value of which a gift from a supplier or a client becomes troubling? And you know, I've had to deal with that a lot. As a marketing person, we get salespeople from all these media companies that come and try to offer you um, free tickets for this or that, or hey, if you buy this, you can get that. Um, I've had uh, radio stations try to give me tickets for concerts and stuff like that for me to buy some, some advertisement with them. In fact, I've had people leave tickets and things like that on my desk with the hope of, of, of doing that. And the problem is if we, the second we accept something like that, then you're obli you feel obligated to purchase from them. And that may not be the best media to promote your stuff, but they give out the best gifts. So you're put in a really bad situation there. Um, so what's too much? What's something that's just really unethical? And, and I'll put some um, questions in the discussion today um, on, on the uh, Blackboard Learn for you to consider and think about. Maybe talk with some of the other um, classmates as to how you would handle those kind of situations. Some of them are black and white. Some of this stuff is just really gray area. 
and some of it depends on how your business is set up, um, what they accept and what they don't accept. And a lot of it's your own values too. You know, what are you willing to do for the story to get the information out there? What are you hiding or don't want to hide? Or how do you be honest when you know it might affect your job or your company you work for? It's very tricky, very um, difficult to, to make those calls. And you're going to be faced with these situations on a regular basis. So again, use the code of ethics that you see in here when you're trying to make decisions um, for your business or company. And use those code of ethics that the Public um, Relations Society has come up with to justify and um, explain to your employees, or employers, I'm sorry, why you made the decision you did. And wish you could have fucked up more. Publicity, that's what you need, Reverend. Publicity, otherwise you're just going to be another babbling voice in the dark. When I'm representing you, it's class all the way. Pretty smooth, Adam. Now, if you can absorb everything I'm trying to teach you, focus and get a new wardrobe, you can make it big in public relations. I got a sense. Oh, it's a publicity man's nature to be a liar. I wouldn't hire you if you wasn't a liar. I said I'd get you magazine coverage, and I'm getting you in the magazine. Look, you got to trust me. No means yes to these people. They would find out. Who's going to find out? The, the American people. Exactly. Who's going to tell them? Tell them that like yourself, he's got the scruples of a guinea pig. And the morals of a gangster. Oh, we just gotta distract him. Just gotta distract him. I lie in person. I'm on the phone. I lie to my friends. I lie to newspapers and magazines who, who sell my lies to more and more people. So there you have it. A brief glimpse into a corporate culture that has industry leaders and management analysts all over the country scratching their heads. Tell me what you want, then. I'm offering you a chance to redeem yourself. You look out into those cameras and you bear your soul. We got hostile action. Hey, hey, nothing is hostile until I say it is.